Okay, so now on to our simplification. Let's consider an identical system of two cohorts, two bulbs, with now only four particles. To keep track, we'll, <clears throat> we'll call the particles A, B, C, and D. Now, this is going to be a bit inelegant, and I expect many of you math nerds can see where this is headed, but let's go ahead <coughs> excuse me, and tackle this system by doing some brute force counting. Let's figure out all the different ways to arrange A, B, C, and D into these two cohorts. I can put one particle on the left and three on the right. I'll just represent the three particles on the right with little tick marks to speed things up a little bit here, but you get the idea. Next, I could put two particles on the left and two on the right. If I then consider the left bulb to be different than the right bulb, I actually have additional two and two arrangements. I then have the arrangements of three particles on the left and only one on the right, so A, B, and C, then D would be over there, etc. And then lastly, what do I have left? Well, I've got the two arrangements where all the particles are on the left, A, B, C, and D, and then nothing on the right, and of course nothing on the left, and all four particles on the right. Now, just for a moment, let's forget about all this counting of A, B, and C, and D we've just done, and just think about what you would have predicted in advance of doing this analysis. If I had asked you, how many particles would you expect to see in the left-hand bulb at any given moment? You would have, thinking perfectly reasonably, said two. Well, lo and behold, it turns out that there are more ways, in other words, more microstates, that show two particles on the left and two on the right than any other possibility. Specifically, we would expect to see two particles in either bulb in six out of 16 of these instances, these six right here, or about 38% of the time. If in this two-bulb system I asked you how surprised would you be to see one particle on the left at any given moment, you would have said, well, that's a bit unusual, but not out of the realm of possibilities. And in fact, one particle on the left can happen four in 16 ways, these four right there or about, obviously, 25% of the time. Unusual? Yeah, maybe just a bit. Extraordinary? Hardly. Now lastly, and a bit more unusual, but still perhaps not earth-shattering, we would expect to find all four particles on the left-hand bulb 6% of the time. This instance here, 1 out of 16. Now, in any real system, my particles A, B, C, and D they would actually be all identical. Perhaps I might be talking about helium atoms that are not um, distinguishable. They are indistinguishable from one another. So what would we do? What we would do is collect all the identical arrangements or microstates, and we would then calculate the entropy of a given arrangement using what's called the Boltzmann equation. This guy right there. S entropy equals K times the natural log of W, where W represents the number of microstates for any given arrangement. For example, there are six microstates, these six that I circled here in the middle, that have two particles on the left and two on the right. Now, the Boltzmann constant has a value of 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23. That's 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23 joules per Kelvin mole. Pretty small number. The Boltzmann constant, what it does is it really bridges the gap between talking about individual particles and the properties and behaviors of a collection of particles. 
you can kind of think of Boltzmann's constant as representing the energy of a single ideal gas particle, what it contributes to the collection of a gas at a given temperature. So it's the particle of a, energy of an individual particle and its contribution to a collection of gas particles. So then the entropy of a given arrangement is determined by taking the energy of a particular particle, K, and multiplying it by the number of identical arrangements for a collection of gas particles, this microstate, or W. And the natural log function is there to help us deal with really large numbers of arrangements while also having small individual energies. Okay, so now let's understand how the entropy of this simple two-bulb, four-particle system changes. If we compare the single arrangement that consists of no particles on the left and four on the right, this one in the bottom right-hand corner, it would actually have an entropy of zero, since the natural log of one, the number of microstates that, has, that have that arrangement, one, the natural log of one is going to be zero. So the entropy is zero. The arrangement that then has two particles on the left and two on the right can occur in six different ways. So a Boltzmann entropy of S equals K times the natural log of six. And that turns out to be about two and a half times 10 to the minus 23. So going from no particles on the left to two particles on the left is actually a positive change in the entropy. Now, admittedly, it's a really small change in the entropy, but it's positive nonetheless. Now, let's put this more generally. When the positional entropy of the system goes from an arrangement of low probability, specifically no particles on the left and four on the right, to a arrangement that has higher probability, 2 and 2, the entropy has increased. Bringing it back to the idea of spontaneity we've been discussing since the beginning of the unit, when a system changes spontaneously, the entropy increases. So in this present instance, if we start with all four particles on the right, we would see a spontaneous change towards having the particles evenly distributed between the two bulbs. You know that happens. If I have two bulbs, all the gas on one side, open up the valve, you know over time that the gas is evenly distributed. That's exactly what happens. Now, whether we realize it or not, we are biased towards seeing these sorts of things happen. We are biased towards seeing things happen in a spontaneous direction. Okay, now, Let's get away from bulbs and, and, and particles. Let's consider a slightly more realistic situation. Instead of four particles and two bulbs, let's think about the air molecules in the room you're sitting in right now. To make the comparison a cl as clear as possible, let's go ahead and divide the room you're sitting in right now into two cohorts, the left side of the room and the right side of the room. Now let's assume that the room has the following dimensions, about 5 meters wide by 5 meters long and about 3 meters tall. So that's ballpark figure, about 15 by 15 by 9 feet. That's going to give us a total volume of about 75 cubic meters. That's a volume of 75,000 liters. Now assuming the room is at 25 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 1 atm, typical conditions, that means there's about 3,100, 3,100 moles of air, or some 2 times 10 to the 27 gas particles in the room you're sitting in right now. 10 to the 27 gas particles. Now, if we had an infinite amount of time, we could go ahead and draw out all the ways in which 10 to the 27 particles can arrange themselves into two halves of the room. Suffice it to say, the test is in January. We don't have that kind of time. But it should be easy to see why the gas particles are about evenly distributed throughout the room you're sitting in right now. There's only one way to have all the gas particles on the left side of the room, i.e. an entropy of zero. But there are a total of 2 to the 2 times 10 to the 27. Go ahead and type that into your calculators. 2 to the power of 2 times 10 to the 27. 
there are that many different ways to arrange these particles into our left and right hand halves. Now, most of those 2 to the 2 times 10 to the 27 ways have about half of the particles on the left and about half of the particles on the right. So, going from all particles in the left-hand side of the room to about half on the left and half on the right would represent a significant change in the entropy, much larger than the change we just saw for four particles. So, why do gas molecules arrange themselves somewhat evenly throughout a given volume? Because they probably should do that. And when they do, the entropy change is positive. When molecules go from a low entropy to a high entropy, we have a positive change. Now, it's not that entropy causes the even arrangement, but the most likely, the spontaneous change towards an even arrangement results in an increase in entropy. Entropy doesn't cause things. Entropy is a way of tracking spontaneous changes. Keep this idea in mind. When systems spontaneously change, the entropy has been increased. More on this later.